Hello and welcome back, it's the Clay Golem here. Um, we're in D&D Beyond today. We're not in Foundry for once, at least not at the moment. So we are building the Fandelva campaign at the moment and we are looking at um, building the um, Fandelin, the town. Uh, and we've been putting in some NPCs and started to build some of those places and, and fill it out and colour it up a bit. Now it's going a bit slow at the moment because we got stuck on doing shops. <laughs> it's distracted as usual. Um, but what I thought is some modules have quite significant NPCs like the big bad guy um, and things like that, that that aren't always fleshed out particularly well. And we already talked about the fact that Nesnar is very two-dimensional. Um, so what I thought I would do is I'm going to build him as a player character effectively in D&D Beyond. There's two reasons I'm doing that. Uh, the first reason is because it's easier to build proper characters in D&D Beyond. I could just use the module and assign all those abilities and things directly in Foundry. Personally, I don't like significant NPCs that aren't built in in a way that matches the way PCs, players, can build their characters. It's always struck me as being a slightly odd that the NPCs have advantages or, or disadvantages over players. No, no, I want it to be an even field. If they're fighting a sixth level wizard, it's going to have all of the capabilities and abilities of a player character sixth level wizard as well. So that's the first reason for doing it in here, so I can make sure it's a a proper character from that point of view. The second reason is, is I can set these characters to public, which means I can drop a link in the um, description below to my version of Nesnar the Black Spider. So you can access it and you can use it and pull it into your own VTTs. So if like me, you're using Foundry, if you're using the DDB importer module, that link is going to be essentially that up the top left here, the D&D Beyond characters with that number. You can just import that directly into your own game. So it's going to bring in all of his stats. It's going to bring in the image for him. All you're going to need to do is chuck that token straight onto the game board and go. You're not going to have to worry about it. So before you do that, let's walk through what I've done. So I've tried to mimic the module um, as much as I can. I've made him the same level, so he's got 68 hit points, so that would make him a sixth level. Uh, I've copied his stats here um, from the module as well, uh, and I've gone through and looked at skills that make sense. So they've given him Arcana, Perception and Stealth. Uh, I haven't. <laughs> Arcana, yeah, he's doing research. Uh, deception makes a lot of sense considering what his activities are and I've given him history because remember in my version what Nesnar is doing is effectively that PhD student he's doing research and he's chosen that this um, forge of spells is the center of his research so he's been had to look into the history of it he's found it through history books so it makes sense that he's studied quite a lot of history of magic um, specifically of magic, magical places, magical items, in order to um, finalise what he's doing for his, effectively, his PhD. So I've given him history. I've also given him perception. Of course, being a drow in sunlight, he does get disadvantage. And I've given him persuasion because he's all about manipulating other people. Um, if we think about it, he's got his doppelgangers, He's using them to manipulate people. He's a behind-the-scenes kind of guy. He's not a stand-up-front-and-throw-fireballs at everyone. I mean, you know, he can. <laughs> but that's not his choice. Okay, so um, I have bumped up his armour class because uh, he has access to um, mage hand. Uh, sorry, mage armour. Why the heck would you not have that running pretty much all the time you possibly can? You would. But how did I do that? Okay, so... Let's look at his. Uh, let's look at his features that I've chosen to give him. We we'll start off with his class features. Of course, these are all very standard: spellcasting, arcane recovery, uh, minor alchemy. He gets um, now instead of having his ability score improvement, I took a feat and I chose to go with eldritch adept. There's a reason for that. I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, his racial traits, yep, keen senses, etc. All of these things that come in there. And of course, Drow Magic, which gives him access to darkness, um, fairy fire and dancing lights automatically, which is great. Uh, now that feat that I chose, Eldritch Adept. So I chose to give him the Eldritch Adept ability of Armour of Shadows. 
So he can, without spending a spell slot, he can basically have mage armor running all of the time, no drama, don't have to think about it, don't have to worry about using spell slots, etc. He can just, on himself, at will, easy peasy. And for me, that felt like a really nice way of just making sure that's always on. So I did override his armor class here, rather than keep getting him to cast it, um, I've just over overridden it, giving him 14. So that's his 13 for mage armor, plus his dexterity bonus. Um, there we go. Bosh. Done. Okay, so that's his features. Uh, Inventory-wise, he hasn't got very much. Um, there will be stuff laying around that belongs to him, but when they encounter him, he's not carrying his own entire house with him, is he? He's pretty much only got his clothes and his spider staff, which is what they give him in the module. Um, so that's what I've given him here, and I've attuned it, and that gives him a couple of abilities. Um, so that's why he's getting, so he's got his spider staff as a weapon, but it also gives him a couple of spell things off of that. Now for spells, um, I tried to keep this on theme with him um, and uh, select things that made sense. So of course he's got things like dancing lights. I've given him friends as a cantrip about that manipulation. Mage hand. I've given him poison spray. Now in the module they've given him poison blast, which he just uses as and when constantly all the time. It's doing two eight um, poison damage all, all the time. Now for me, it's like why have you invented and created that very specifically? That didn't make a lot of sense. So I've replaced that effectively with Poison Spray. Yes, it's got a shorter range, but it's actually doing a bit more damage as well. So I felt that that was a fair balance for him to have that. Uh, Ray of Frost, because why wouldn't you? Uh, just again, to fill out that complement of stuff he's got. These are all cantrips. These are all at will. Lovely. Um, so he, of course, he's got his staff that he can use um, at longer ranges. Uh, Fairy Fire from Drow Magic, Mage Armor from his Eldritch Adept, of course, and what wizard would be caught short without Magic Missile? Um, so, of course, he's got that as well. That gives him his longer range attack if he needs it. Um, second level spells, obviously, Darkness, Drow Magic. I chose to give him Invisibility um, because, uh, you know, yes, if Darkness doesn't work, he can literally turn invisible and just disappear, get out of there. Uh, knock. Because he's exploring old places. He's trying to get into different things. It made sense that he would have that as a utility. Obviously Magic Missile. I've given him Pyrotechnics as well. Okay, so um, why not? One of the reasons I gave him Pyrotechnics is because it's, he's a, it's a transmutation spell. He's a transmutation wizard. Why? Well, you know, it just kind of made sense that he's looking for the, the forge of spells and that's about creating magic items and it just made sense so I went with transmutation because why not? Um, yeah, it's fine. Spider climb that he gets from the staff. Suggestion, again, that's about that influencing and control of people. He's very much a behind-the-scenes manipulator uh, and he's got the web from his staff. And I gave him some third level spells, of course, uh, invisibility and magic missile, just upcasts. I gave him sending. Might be a strange one to give him, but I figured he's a PhD student. He has to report back on a fairly regular basis um, on progress and what's happening. And you've got to keep in contact with his, effectively, his mentor. Um, so I thought that makes sense that he's got that. Now, the you know. How often he actually reports in and things like that. Um, who knows? But he can give little updates and stuff. It just kind of fitted with his story. I mean, the players will probably never, ever know that he's got that memorised. But there we go. Uh, and slow. So again, he does not want to get in a toe-to-toe -to -toe fight. So if combat breaks out, he's got the option of slowing his opponents. He's got the option of using web to slow his opponents and stop them. Um, he can turn himself invisibility, invisible so he can escape. He can create darkness so he can escape. He can even use spider climb if he needs to to escape. Pyrotechnics is another way that he can use to escape. So his main attack spells, because I didn't want him to slaughter the party by himself. I wanted him to continually be able to evade them and escape and really drive them up the wall by being a real slippery fish. If they do get hold of him, I want him to try his best to get away, preserve his own life. Um, he'll come back. <laughs> he will come back after them, um, or at least to pursue his goal. And he's going to treat them very much like f annoying flies. You know, go away, go away, leave me alone, let me do my thing. 
Um, so that's why I went with that spell selection. I haven't made him over powerful from a combat point of view, but I don't want him to be. I want him to be using those monsters and things. So that's what I've gone with. Uh, so down in the description, I'm going to leave him there for you. Uh, so that if you want to pull him in, we can do that. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But before we do that, let's look at our other one that we've got on here as well. So Glassstaff is the leader of the Red Brands in Phandalin, um, potentially a significant character that they could have dealing with. It's another wizard, of course. Uh, this one's only third level. I say only, you know, still a third level wizard. Um, but leads those Red Brands and things. Now, initially, they were supposed to be a good guy who turned to the dark side. Uh, so Lano, the good guy. Glassstaff, the, the not-so-good guy. What that means is, I mean, Lano's not an idiot. If he can see things are not going his way and his power with the red brands is is waning and they're being taken out, he is more than happy to go, oh no, they captured me and have been holding me prisoner and uh, thank you for rescuing me. Isn't that great? So that he can prolong not only his own life, but his freedom and return to what his original duties were supposed to be, which was administering Phandalin. Uh, and of course it went to his head and he took it. Now remember, the townsfolk, even the ones who do know who leads Red Brands, don't know it's Lano. They know it's somebody called Glassstaff. So he's got this dual identity. So yeah, in that case, it may well be he gets rescued, in inverted commas, by the players. Uh, and Glassstaff is never found. Now, you know, if they're keeping their eye open, the players might go, hang on a minute, yeah, you're Lano, but but what's that over in the corner? There's a glass staff there. Really? Did he leave his staff behind? You sure that's not yours? So it could create this uh, possibility of an investigation or some, um, some diplomacy kind of activity there with persuasion and intimidation and investigation, insight roles to work out hang on, are they one and the same person or are they separate? So I just thought I would do that. Now, obviously, you know, they could grab a red brand, beat the crap out of him until he, <laughs> until he says, no, no, that's our boss. Um, but there's all sorts of ways they could solve that or maybe Lano gets away with it. And who knows, Lano might end up being on their side. If he sees that that's of a more benefit, he's going to go where the wind blows. So that's my idea of how Lano works. He's a, he's a sneaky little devil. He's out for himself. Of course he is, because most people are. Right, so what have we got with Lano? So again, I've tried to replicate pretty much what's in the module, um, just making him as a third level wizard, uh, giving him investigation, a bit of history. He's got Arcana, of course, and he's got some religion behind him as well. All fine. Uh, under traits and features, he is a bog standard human. Okay, so he's got no, uh, I did gave him no feats. He can also speak Dwarvish, which is quite handy considering mining town and stuff. Um, racial traits as uh, feats none okay so he's very sort of bog standard now spells wise uh, again remember he's got a staff of defense you know wizards often struggle to find magic items you know sword plus one is found seems to be found around every corner but in this module there's actually stuff for mages which is quite nice it's kind of built in having that to artificially inflate it so um yeah he's just got his cantrips light mage hand nothing particular um, staff of defense he's getting his mage armor from that um, although yeah he's so he's got his plus one bonus from staff of defense but he hasn't got mage armor cast upon him so of course that will improve significantly once he casts that uh, magic missile he's got shield charm person as well when he needs to he's more than happy to use that on the player characters to try and get him out of a sticky situation he's also got hold person so he may well use that if he's trying to evade capture. Okay, if he can't charm his way out of it, maybe he can literally hold person and leg it or whatever. He's not going to fight to the death if he can help it. Okay, he's either he's not going to surrender either. He's either going to try and convince them that he's an innocent captive or he's going to try and leg it. That's it. That's his two primary um, motives for survival. Uh, so he's got some bit of equipment, or to perhaps click on to say that he's actually got that dagger. Um, but again, it hasn't got an awful lot of stuff on him because it tends to be in the hideout. Uh, again, so we've got his image in there. 
he's all ready to go uh, again it's just going to be this link up here I have set both of these characters to public um, so you should be able to use that link and pull them directly into Foundry um, yourself or what other else VTT you're using um, you should be able to do that but let's flip over to Foundry right now and just remind you how we pull those characters into our own game using uh, DDB Importer. I'll see you over there in a moment. So here we are back in Foundry VTT. We're back in Fandalin, the town, but we're actually in the Red Brand hideout, um, which is part of that. And you can see I've already got Lano Glassstaff um, in here ready to go. So how do we bring in those ones from um, D&D Beyond? So just to show you, we have done a previous video on this particular add-on, um, but for those who just need a little reminder, what we're going to do is we're going to go create an actor. Uh, we're going to call it anything we want, just all the A's, um, and I'm not going to put it in a folder for the moment. I'm going to create that actor. So here is our blank character sheet. Um, that is just giving us everything that we kind of, you know, are familiar with, but nothing on it because we haven't had it added anything like race um, and all of those bits. Now, of course, what we could do is absolutely go through the SRD and add those things on, but we've just built it in D&D Beyond because it's easier. So at the top left here, we've got this little edit spanner icon. If you click that, we then get the ability a to edit edit the character name and things but we get this dnd beyond button now the reason we get that if you haven't caught up with the other videos if you're not sure what the heck we're talking about under my installed modules my active modules uh, we have a there it is um, ddb importer a dnd beyond integrator so it, that's the add-on that is going to allow us to do the bit we're about to do it gives us this button that when we click it we can import a character and it's asking us for a URL. That's the URL I'm going to put in the description. Uh, one for um, Lano and one for Nesnar. So that's Nesnar's link I've just dropped in there. Um, we've got the URL. It's given us a little uh, green tick there to say that that is going to work for us. Click start import. I don't need to fiddle with any of those other options. Boom. And here he is. Done. Okay. So if I go back to this top left, this little spanner icon, and just click that again, it puts back into play mode. Uh, and we can see that it's brought in his portrait for us. Uh, it's brought in his hit points. It's brought in all of his hit dice. All of his skills have been updated. Remember, we mentioned about history and arcana. That's all in here. We brought in his equipment. His spider staff is here. Um, it's brought in all of his wizard features and things like that and it's brought in all of his spells that we selected. So, bosh, job done. Uh, now, of course, we can check stuff. He's got this mage armor as an at will now. Uh, if I go back to here, I can just drag him directly onto the board. There he is, ready to go. I can select him, I can cast. We get our sound animation, and I can apply that. Bosh, there we go, and it's updated his armor class. Um, to 14, 13 base from the mage armor, plus his one for his dexterity. That's all working. He's got his little animation on there glowing away as well. Uh, lovely. That works. Simple, isn't it? Really easy to import, bring him in, uh, and job done. Um, so I'm going to drag him and chuck him into my NPC folder Fandelva, because that's getting quite large now. Uh, so I need to keep this reasonably tidy. But that's it that's how we import from D, &D beyond so uh yeah i'm gonna put the set it again oh, i'm gonna say it again we've got the links for um for lano uh, and we've got the links for uh, nesnar in the description D, D beyond i have set them to public um characters so you should be able to just use that link access them pull those into your own game if that's what you want to do uh, let me know if you're going to use them just drop a comment would be really good to say that yeah actually that's going to save you time now if there are any other significant npcs that you feel that would be useful for us to do in this way uh, and i can make them in dnd beyond and i can give you a link so you guys can just access them and pull them straight in any significant characters uh, yeah i can do that happy to do that not a problem at all and then uh, one person does all the work everybody else benefits brilliant 
All right, thanks very much, guys. Uh, if you're watching this, if you've been watching a few of these, don't forget there's a subscribe button down there. It'd be really useful, would really help out the channel. Cheers. Bye-bye.